Hi there, this is Danny Wood and I'm excited to be introducing a new technology coaching program for Realtors. And I'm going to start off by sharing with you how video is changing the face of real estate. And when I say that, a lot of Realtors picture that they have to go out and get an HD video camera and it's going to be them who's on film. And that's so far from the truth. The reality is how we use real estate or video in real estate is that you can record anything you're looking at on your computer screen and your voice just like I'm doing right now for this presentation. So picture applying that to your real estate business. The tool that you use to make video screen sharing is called Snagit, S-N-A-G-I-T. It's free to use uh, for a 30-day period and then after that it's a one-time fee of $50. And how we use it in real estate is to give sellers feedback, to respond to buyer inquiries, to create fresh content for your websites, the SEO, including video in your email drip plans, doing virtual area tours for listings using Google Maps, team training, and more. So as an example, seller feedback. In my area, getting seller feedback is a very hard thing to do. Buyer agents show the property, we call them up for feedback, and then we don't get any response. Now, you have to give feedback to your sellers. So if the buyers aren't giving you the feedback, you can create feedback based on the market. So I would just pull up a map on my computer screen of the area that my listing is in and do a video like this. I would hit the record button on the screen and say, Hi Mr. and Mrs. Seller, uh, this is Danny Wood giving you a weekly update and I want to point out this is your home for sale right here. Now three days ago these guys just got put on the market. They're $10,000 less than you and they have a finished basement. The other thing to point out is this home was already listed before we put yours on the market. Well, it's still showing as active on the MLS, but it's actually sold conditional. So what that means is another buyer chose this home over your home. And we think it's because of the positioning in the market. I want to send off this video and then follow up with a phone call. You hit the stop button and then you can email that video off to that seller. Because if a week goes by and they don't hear from you, they're creating stories in their head that their realtor isn't doing a good job. Well, we have feedback to provide. In this example, it was that you're overpriced because these guys had the same home, a finished basement, and $10,000 less. So that's competition. Plus, these homes are selling. So every week, there's the feedback, what's happening in the market around them. You can just use uh, your company's website, the MLS, or your own website, and just record the button, make the video, and email it off. Now, when you're using video, and you create a video using a camcorder, this is the process. You make, say, a two-minute video on film. It's on the camera, then you have to transfer that data over to your computer. So that happens, and then you have to save that and upload it either to YouTube or attach it as uh, an email attachment. So you just took a two-minute process, the two-minute video, and turned it into an eight-minute process. Well, the cool thing with Snagit is that when you hit the stop button from making a video, you can tell it to do two things, upload directly to YouTube or upload to the cloud. I put videos on YouTube uh, for when I want people to search and find them, but if you're doing a private video like this seller feedback one, I would put it directly on the Snagit's cloud, which is called screencast.com. So I totally removed the steps of saving it on my computer and then uploading it somewhere else. With Snagit, I made the video and now I can email it, I can put it right on YouTube and it takes only maybe three minutes time to make the video and then put it up. So you're going to have more opportunity to do that. Another example would be buyer inquiries. Somebody calls you up on one of your listings and uh, after you hang up the phone you think, oh man, I have a, a connection with that person. That's somebody I really want to work to earn the right to be their realtor. Well, if that happened, I would make a video like this. I would uh, pull up the listing that they called me up on my computer screen hit the record button and say something like, Hey Joey, this is Danny Wood. Thank you for the time on the phone. I just want to point out this is the listing that you called me up on. Now, I realize you're relocating to our area and you're going to commute to Toronto. So when you do that, this is how you would get to the 401 and then you're going to head that direction to get to Toronto. Now, if our listing doesn't fit your criteria, look at all the other listings within the area that do. I'm just reaching out to you. If you have any interest in any listing um, within our area, I definitely want to be the realtor to help you out. So take a look and I'm here for you. End the video. 
and then you email that video to the people and now they have your email they have a personal message that is only for them and it shows them the real estate in the area and how you can help them out as a realtor another example would be building rapport on your website so a lot of us as realtors that's how we generate our business is internet leads when a person fills in a form giving name phone number email well you're a person too and if you went to a website and they drove you to a form that said hey give me your name phone number email you're really reluctant to do it you don't know what's going to be on the other side you also don't know if those people are going to spam you with with email and bombard you with the drip plan so instead of driving people to your form you can make a video showing the benefits of doing that and how to do it I would just go to my website hit the record button and say hey thanks for visiting our uh, open house tour website if you create an account you click the sign up button right here when you do that you're going to get instant access to all the photos listings virtual tours and area information about the homes for sale currently now if you want to know what the house values are go ahead and click the what's my house worth tab we're going to be able to update you with the home values if you needed a home uh, to sell and sell quickly now I am the realtor who runs this website so I don't spam you if you fill in your information my name is Danny Wood and I look forward to following up stop the video and you embed that video on the page above the form or before they get to the form and what it's doing is uh, educating them on how to take the action you want them to take it's also showing them the benefits of what's going to happen on the other side and it's creating re rapport with you as a realtor and them as a consumer that you haven't yet talked to now if you farm and have a geographic farm this is what happens people are driving down the street within your farm area they see a for sale sign of a home listed and what they do is they keep on driving they go home to their computer they type in the name of the street the city that they're in and a real estate related word well if you pull up each street within your farm area you're gonna see the first page of Google is already full of realtors who have information about listings in that area well they're doing short-lived marketing because they're only talking about that one listing one two three street name if you did a generic video for the streets within your farm area you don't have a short shelf life because those other guys are promoting that one listing it's either going to sell or come off the market and either way so does all the marketing material you don't have to do that when you just talk generically so you can talk generically about uh, the streets within your farm area and your YouTube videos are going to come up on the first page of Google I don't know if you've noticed when you search on Google but YouTube videos are appearing on the first page well Google owns YouTube and what Google's doing is it converts the videos from speech to text and it's reading all the words that are in that text those are basically keywords so I would pull up my website and say hit the record button and say hey are you looking for houses homes and real estate for sale around the Coldstream Drive area in Oshawa Ontario well you found it just click the link below we also have updated reports on the house values and we appreciate connecting with you that's it it's like a 20 second video that video is going to start appearing in the first results of you uh, Google now I don't expect people to go to YouTube and search but I do expect people to go to Google and search so that's how we're going to get our videos there the thing I want to point out is you don't want to do a video for each street within your city because that's just going to become overwhelming and Google is going to discredit it it's going to be too similar of content but you totally can do a pocket if this was your farm area right here you could do videos for the streets within that farm area and now you have free traffic coming to you staff training now I've been studying the business of real estate and about eight years ago is when I noticed uh, the shift and it got really heavy on the team system so individual agents started getting admin and then buyer agents and then seller agents well when you do that eight years ago you'd have to create a team operations manual and it was basically a binder with step-by-step -step instructions on each person's role well picture this so you you hire your team you have your admin person and then a buyer agent and uh, some, a seller agent for example well all of these people are either going to be moving up in your company or moving out so if you hire your uh, administrator she's either going to move up to become an office manager or she's going to move out to another opportunity either way you're going to have to retrain this role so 
when you're training that role for the first time, don't you normally show the person how to do it? For example, I would say, hey, Betty Ann, can you come here for a second? I want to show you how to load a listing. And then while you're doing that, you're showing her on the computer, okay, this is, you have to log in here, this is the password, and these are the steps that you take. Well, while you're showing her, it's just as simple to hit the record button. Now you have a video tutorial of that role. Say in a month's time, she has to uh, mass email your database. Well, 30 days later, she's probably going to forget the steps that are needed to, uh, to make that happen. So now she can just go back to the video tutorial showing that process of the job. And it um, frees up your time as a leader, and it empowers her or him to find the answer to the question that they have. So I have a two-month coaching program on technology for realtors. It's recorded live in HD, and you can rewatch the videos at your own leisure. We cover everything from video to Google and organic, pay-per-click advertising, instant chat for your websites, social media, virtual assistants and the team business, scripts, and marketing techniques. You can pre-register or sign up at danwood.eventbrite.com. And keep on listening, because I have a little bit more to talk about. I want to share with you Facebook. It was a, uh, about eight years ago again, um, and 15 of my friends all hopped on an airplane and moved to Whistler, BC. I'm the only one who stuck around because I was on a path to uh, get into business. I knew I was going to become a realtor, and I was going to school for marketing. So I didn't want to throw everything out the window, so I stuck back. But I had to get social media to stay connected with my friends at that time. Now, Facebook wasn't a public company, so I picked up the phone and I called them and they actually answered. If you call them today, I, I don't know if you'll get an answer, but they actually answered and I said, hey Facebook, I'm getting into real estate and I'm going to be using you as an advertising platform, but I only want to advertise to my friends and family. I don't want to advertise to everybody um, on Facebook. I also don't want to just use the wall as a spamming tool. I don't want to just constantly use it and say, hey, look at me, I sell a bunch of real estate, or I'm doing another open house, or I got a new listing, that sort of thing. It gets very spammy. I wanted to advertise where the advertising belongs. And the person on the phone said, no, we're sorry, you can't do that. But you can. They just didn't understand the question. So you've seen these Facebook ads before. You can get your name, your office phone number, and all your brokerage information. Because you're advertising on Facebook, if you don't put your face in the ad, if it was just a picture of the house, they wouldn't know it's you who's advertising. So you have to have your face on the ad. And the numbers for my advertising on Facebook would be, um, in the last seven days, I targeted my ad only to 152 people. Those 152 people saw the ad 61 times. So 152 times 61 is 9,000 impressions. So in one week, I reminded my sphere who I am and what I do 9,000 times. The total cost for that, $7.41. So if you did a monthly newsletter and you sent out a newsletter to 152 people, that would be 152 envelopes, 152 stamps, and 152 items of value that you're going to stuff in the mail. We would be lucky if you got 130 of those people to open it up and then throw it in the trash right away. So that's a ton of money for 130 impressions. Or you can spend $7.41 and remind them who you are what, and what you do 9,000 times. And this is how you do it. You can say to Facebook when you're creating the ad, I want my ad to target everybody who is in my country who lives in these cities. So you can put a laundry list of the cities that you work. And then the way that you filter it out is say, also, they have to be connected to my page, Dan Wood Realtor. That's how you filter it out. This is a Facebook profile, and this is how all the ads are generated that you see based on this one page. So it, if you go into Facebook and click on your profile, it's going to show your name, where you work, where you live, if you're married or not, your age, where you went to school, everything about what you like and what you do. Well, all of the ads that you see are related to what's on this page. So us as a realtor can use other people's profiles as a way to filter out our advertising so that the right person sees it. As an example, there's over 2 million people who are on Facebook in Toronto. 
that's way too many people if I was a realtor servicing the Toronto area. There's no way I could advertise to all those people. But what if I turned it into niche advertising? As an example, when I'm creating an ad on Facebook, I could say, who are the people in Toronto that are engaged? People change their status from single to engaged, and when that happens, currently there's 22,000 of them, they can see an ad running for a home buyer seminar. When these people change their status from engaged to married, they'll no longer see that ad, but the new people who are getting engaged will start seeing the ad. So instead of shotgun marketing and targeting everybody in your city, you can base it on their profile, uh, profile and who they are and what they're up to. So this example is people who are engaged. They have a high chance that they're going to be buying a home together and moving in within the year. Or if you have a team member who speaks a second language, you can say, who are the people on Facebook in my city who speak whatever the language may be? So in this example, I picked Spanish. There's 27,000 of them. So you have an ad written up in Spanish and then all your brokerage information. So you're targeting your advertising to people based on their profile. Another one would be if you're a broker owner or a manager or a team leader and you want to hire more real estate agents, you could say, who are the people in my city on Facebook that are in real estate? 18,000 of them in this example, buyer agent needed. And so your name, office number, and all your brokerage info would always stay the same, but this picture is what's directly related to the people in the profile. Another example is all these TV shows are out there on getting rich quick, fixing and flipping homes, that sort of thing, and they watch the TV show, then they go back to Facebook and they press the like button on these TV shows and they publicly say, hey, I like this stuff. Well, you can use that profile data and say, who are the people in my city and put a laundry list of all the TV shows that are into uh, fixing and flipping properties. Now, you can create an ad that is targeted only to those people in your city and you're now the realtor who is providing the listings because they're brainwashed on getting rich quick. So you're the realtor in their area and you can connect using Facebook. This is an example of an offer I made. It's a Facebook offer, you can look that up. And I said claim your free book from Chapters, which is our uh, local bookstore, in Oshawa on buying your first home. Well, in seven days, 14 people claimed that book. I didn't think anybody was actually going to claim it, so I had to run out to Chapters and buy all those books. I gave out the 14 books, and of those 14 books given out, um, two buyers and one seller came of it. So you can advertise in the newspaper, something like that, and you're hoping and praying that people take action. The cool thing with Facebook is you only pay when a person takes the action. So when I roll my mouse down, it's going to cover the numbers, so just let that disappear. And at the bottom left, it says campaign reach. You can't see it, but it reached... Um, there it is, 8,000 times my ad was displayed. So I look at that as free advertising. So 8,000 times my name was promoted within my city, Dan Wood Realtor. Of those 8,000, there is only, I think that number is gonna say either 86 or 96 clicks. So people clicked on the ad. That's when I paid, and I paid about $23 for that to happen. So I love it that you only pay when the action takes place. And I have a theory that um, one in four will work out. So if I give out this book, uh, one in four will end up doing a deal. So with that thought, next year, if I buy 250 books with a one in four ratio, that means 190 people are going to run away with my book offer. I'm never going to hear from them, and I'm not going to get anything out of those 190 books. But that also means 60 people will do a deal. So 60 times your average commission is a really, really strong pillar. And I love how you can do that using Facebook. Many of us do client appreciation events. So this is um, the perforated business cards that you get from uh, the local office supply store. And you just run these cards through your machine. And in this example, I registered a URL said, that says tagyourself.ca. I have it redirect to the photo album of the event that's happening. And then a photographer is at the event taking pictures of everybody. When he takes their picture, he hands them this card. It says tagyourself.ca. And it was to be entered for a chance to win Toronto FC soccer tickets. So when you're on Facebook and you or somebody tags your photo, 
that photo that you're tagged in goes out to all your friends and family who are on Facebook. So on average, a Facebook person has uh, 200 friends and family. So in this one picture alone, that's the movie theater we rented, uh, filled it up with all our past, present, and future clients. And in this one photo, there's something like 17 people found way where they were sitting and tagged their photo. 17 times 200 is a lot of exposure to friends and family within our local community. So you're already doing the event, just leverage it through social media and get them interactive. When they tag their photo, their name would appear on my Facebook page. All I did is write down their name on a piece of paper and put it in a hat. Once everything was done, I drew one of the names out of the hat and that's how we picked the winner. So I'll go back to, I'm going to cover Google pay-per-click. When a person goes to Google and they type in something to do with real estate up here, we want to come up on the first page of Google. And there's companies who are out there that say, we can get you on the first page of Google um, and it's really cheap. What they're doing is uh, Google pay-per-click advertising for themselves and then inflating the cost to you. So, for example, they would pay 80 cents per click and then they charge you $1.20 per click. It's like printing money for these guys because they don't have a cost until, it, until somebody clicks. And as soon as that happens, it gets billed to you at a higher rate. So it really is like printing money. This is a campaign that I had running. I got 10,000 clicks uh, to my website. It cost about 56 cents per click and uh, in total $6,000. So I'm going to show you step by step how to do that in the webinar. Right now I'm just giving an overview to give you ideas. So this is the common problem that realtors do when they're setting up pay-per-click advertising. They say, Danny, I want to I get found when somebody types in my city and homes for sale and real estate and, and MLS and houses and agent and realtor and they put this huge long laundry list because they want to be found for everything. The best way to do pay-per-click is not that way, it's to niche it. So your city and the word MLS, your city MLS listings and MLS your city. Because you know what people are searching, they went to Google and they typed in Oshawa MLS listings, because you're going to pay for just those three, four, five or six words that match that, what they typed up here, you can create an ad that is going to have the exact words that they searched. Because if you have a huge long, long laundry list of all these keywords over here, how is the ad going to match what they search? You're going to have to have a, ge a generalized ad and it won't have many of the words in here because you can't fit that many words into an ad. By doing it this way, you know what you're paying for, you know what they searched, you also know where to drive them to. So the ad is going to have a higher conversion rate because that's exactly what they searched. If they didn't type in Oshawa Homes for Sale, they typed in Oshawa MLS listings. So to us, it's the same thing, but to them, it's not. At that moment, what they were looking for was Oshawa MLS listings. So I want to create an ad that targets just that niche and then make them land on a page that fits exactly what they're looking for. As soon as they land on my page, it would say Oshawa MLS listings. That's exactly what they were looking for. They're going to stick around on our site and start clicking around, booking showings, filling in forms. So for $5 a day, under $160 a month, you can outsell the average realtor. You only need one campaign running and when you're ready you can add more as you go. So if I go back, you can have that would be a campaign, 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 that would be a campaign. So as you get bigger and bigger you can keep adding campaigns and play red light, green light with your budget. But until you have it working right, you might as well just do one at a time. But I want to caution is that you don't do, when you do one at a time, Oshawa townhomes would be one. I'm not going to include the words Oshawa MLS or Oshawa house values in a campaign that talks about Oshawa townhomes. I know what they're looking for. They're looking for Oshawa townhomes. So when they click on this ad, I want to have them land directly on my page talking about Oshawa townhomes. You're going to increase the number of clicks, you're going to increase the happiness of the people who are there, and they're going to stick around on your site. And these are the new rules to SEO, search engine optimization. So Google has changed its algorithm and it's more weighted on um, these stats. So they are tracking when a person comes to your website, how many pages are they looking at? 
It also tracks when a person comes to your website, how long are they staying on your website. It's also tracking when a person comes to your website, how many of them are clicking the X button right away. How they track this is through a tool called Google Analytics. You'll want to get that added to your website so that they can start indexing all this information about your website. The old rules were you have a page based on a keyword, you have a picture about that keyword, you have a video about that keyword, and a bunch of text about that keyword. No longer is that how Google is working. Most of the metrics now are weighted on people's happiness on your website. And the only way to show Google the happiness is by adding this tool, Google Analytics, to your website. When people are on your website, the way that you increase their happiness is we, most of us have a templated website. So if you work different cities, up at the top have search real estate for sale in and you put each of the cities. So when they click on the city, it gives them all the listings. So if they clicked on Oshawa, it's going to take them to the Oshawa map with all the Oshawa listings. If they click on Pickering, it's going to take them to the Pickering map with all the listings. If this is your screen, I'm drawing an invisible box, that's the screen. Anything below this line here, this is called the fold. Anything below the fold is really irrelevant. People don't scroll down. So if your picture is taken up half the screen and pushing all the content down, you either have to shrink your picture or remove it totally because people don't care about you, they care about the listings. The other thing is you have to make it one click navigation. So one click to get to the house values, one click to get to the buyer sign up, one click to get to the cities that you work. If you work in a larger city, say you work Toronto, instead of having all the different cities because you only focus on one, you could have the different types of property in that city. So Toronto semis, Toronto townhomes, Toronto bungalows, Toronto luxury, Toronto commercial, Toronto whatever you service. One click access to all the different things that you do, all your contact info, everything else. You can push everything below the fold because really nobody's going to be using it anyways. As an example, this is a, uh, a lot of realtors get templated websites and when they do that there'll be like a buyer button. People have to click the buyer button and then find the search listings. They're not going to do that. It's just not going to happen. So you have to have above all of this junk easy buttons. Home values, search listing. The other thing is if this is a templated website I have a templated website and then some other realtor the next day gets the same templated website and the 300 people before me all have the same templated website. If I go to my site and then I go to their site, if I click on the buying tab, it has all the exact same tabs. Check it out. If you get a template, it'll have all these pages and if you go to them, it's going to be the exact same on each and every one of the templates. You either have to go to each page and edit the content so that it's totally fresh and relevant to you and what you're up to or remove the page completely because Google already has a copy, a direct copy of that from all these other realtor sites so there's no way your uh, closing cost page is going to come up on the first page of Google when all those other realtors have the exact same template. So the only way that it could is if you went to that closing cost page and totally changed all of the content. That's the only way template really works. The other thing you want to change on these templated websites is this is an example house values form. It's asking way too many questions. Like sometimes I've seen on some sites it's asking what their fax number is. You don't care what their fax number is, right? So remove all of these hurdles because it really doesn't matter to us um, the age of the house and the square footage unless they fill in a form. So if you shorten the form to say what's your address, what's the city, what's your name, phone number and email, that's much more pleasing to look at as a consumer and there's a higher chance that they're going to fill in that information hoping that they get the house values on the other side. They're not even going to want to do this because they probably don't even know the answers to a lot of the questions. So shorten the forms so that it's easier for people to use. Now during this two month coaching program that I do and every Thursday I go over all of the detail on each step. So step by step I show you how to set up the pay-per-click advertising and then I record it so that you can set up the pay-per-click advertising yourself. If you want to register for the webinar and coaching, it's danwood.eventbrite.com. Instant Chat is another free tool that all of you can add to your website. So I pointed this out that this is a very 
hard thing for people to fill in. They don't want to give all their information just to ask a question. Well, there's a tool, and I'm going to give you a direct link to get a free trial to it. Um, and it's not even a trial, it's just to get a free copy of it. It's free for realtors to use. When you add it to your website, this is a blown up version of it. It's an instant chat box. It goes down on the bottom right of every page on your website. It allows the consumer to ask a question. When they ask a question, it's going to go from their computer to your cell phone. You can text them the answer back and it's going to go back to their computer. So we're reversing the process. Currently, a lot of realtors have it, give me your information, then ask your question and I'll see if I can help. And I probably won't even get back to you. That's how most realtors are working. But with this tool, it allows the consumer to ask the question first, you to respond to them immediately, and really the only way to help people is to get their information anyways. But this allows them to ask the question first and then get an immediate reply, and then through that conversation you can get their information. You can run it from your phone, but you can also use the dashboard that it comes with. So it will show you a laundry list of everybody who's on your website. So if there's three people on your site, it shows you the three buttons. It shows you what page the people are on, what they searched to find your page, and it created an account based on their IP address. So they don't even know that this tool created an account for them. It's going to track how many times they've been to your website. So this guy's been here ten times, this guy five times. It also tracks any conversations that you've had. So this guy's had one conversation and this one zero. So this is a person who's been back ten times and they haven't talked to me yet. I noticed they Google search Steyer Street Oshawa house for sale and they're looking at the Steyer Street Oshawa page. I could open up that person's profile and send them a text message and say, hey, are you looking for a particular listing on Steyer Street? And of course they are. And I've never had anybody say, wow, this is creepy. How do you know all this information? They're just really happy that there's somebody on the other side who's there to help them out. You can also have it um, programmed to say certain things based on what page they're on. So if they're on uh, your house values page, you can tell the tool to say this. And I would say, hey, are you looking for an updated report of the house values? We update it every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you want a copy of tomorrow's report, just fill in the form below or message me here. And it gives those people the gentle push based on what page they're on and it's saying whatever it is. So if they're on a home buyer seminar, you could have it say, okay, pop open and say this. Um, are you looking at joining the seminar? The seats are filling up quick. I can reserve a spot for you. Just let me know if you have any interest. And again, it's just pushing them towards taking the action, which is contacting us. When they contact you using the tool and it goes to your phone, so in this example, um, the message went to them and it said that new listings are going to hit the market. Um, oh no, this example was that uh, we're doing work on the website. If you run into any issues, just let us know we're here. Otherwise, if you want to book a showing or something, we can help you out. And then that person said, thanks, I'm just looking. Well, that went to my phone and now I take over and I can respond to them. So I can just hit forward slash one and it types out all of this. New listings are going to get listed tomorrow and mixed in with the ones you've already been looking at. Did you want me to keep you posted on the new listings going forward? They're going to say sure or something to that nature. Well, step two of the conversation, forward slash two, okay, your name and email. They're going to give the name and email. After they give the name and number or a name and email, step three, got it, dot, 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 and your number and then they're going to give the number. See, that totally sounds like I'm typing it out, but I'm not. I hit one, two, and three, and then I got all their information. Once I get their information, I can follow up with a phone call to truly help them. And to keep them on our website, because I already got their information, I don't want them to have to fill in another form. So I give them a guest pass to the website. Enjoy guest pass, there's a username and password, because I don't want them to leave my website and go to another website filling in information. So I'm keeping them on our website. I already got their info, so I don't need to do it again. This is how you get that tool. It's called, uh, go to Google, G-O-O -O dot G-L forward slash 6-H-P-M-U. Sorry, it's so weird looking. But that's going to take you right to the page that you can download and start using that tool right away. It is free for realtors. Um, I upgraded and used the paid one. The only difference between the free one and the paid one is that you can have more than one conversation at a time. 
and you can have it um, customized to say your name. So like instead of, it just says agent on the free one and on mine it, it'll say Dan or Dan Wood or whatever team member you want running it. So if you have interest in learning step by step how to apply all of this plus way way more. I mean it's a two month program an hour every Thursday. Uh, I would drive you nuts if I tried to do it all right now. So this is just an overview of what the program is and if you want to pre-register or sign up you go to danwood.eventbrite.com